is um courtesy of the shade bro um i guess we have some development on your whole octavian um abuse of his ex-girlfriend alleged of course put that in there just in case someone decides to come after me um so According to the Shade Borough, uh, Shade Borough, sorry, Octavian's ex-girlfriend Hannah says she was offered twenty thousand to never speak on their relationship again, and this is courtesy of a documentary that she filmed for the BBC. Um, so let's read the caption here. It says the following: uh, Residents last year, Octavian's ex-girlfriend Hannah detailed the experience of physical and emotional abuse while in a relationship with Octavian. She also shared the graphic images and shows injuries. She has now appeared in a BBC documentary titled "Music Dirty: Music Secrets" and revealed. Octavian's lawyer offered 20,000 in an attempt to silence her from not speaking out. The full story is on Shadow.com. So, um, this shouldn't be much of a surprise. I think she mentioned it in some passing or alluded to the fact, or maybe you put it down on paper, not too sure, but this isn't that surprising. We knew this was happening. We knew that um there was obviously a harem of enablers and uh excuse makers and turning of the blind eyes um or looking the other way that were involved in this we know that you know for the most part if you've read any sort of stories and um, accounts of abuse especially in an industry such as music you'd know that rarely if ever do things happen in isolation and rarely if ever do things happen in private and in secret that no one knows about somebody has heard or has been made aware of something that's been happening untoward and then of course it's up to that person and the close circle to put that person in check but it's rarely ever comes a point where you hear of a label proactively going and taking an artist and play taking him to one side and saying hey you can't do x y and z because it's going to damage your career and it's effectively hurting somebody that you allegedly love it's usually the close team of that person that needs to kind of step in and do that but most of the time they don't do that either because they don't want to upset the apple cart they don't want to get involved um the artists themselves don't are probably won't going to listen they just want to turn a blind eye because loads of other people are doing it whatever reasons it wasn't a surprise to hear that somebody in Octavian's team was obviously trying to silence the girl and buy her out of her accusation and obviously luckily for her and for I guess for this industry in general she kind of rejected that and was able to kind of go through with the charges and again like I said in other cases there is no winner here right no one wins from this um from what I gather and from what she said, from the clips that I've seen, they were in an actual committed relationship. They kind of fell over head over heels with each other. She was obviously envisioning herself spending a long time with this guy. He obviously met her and thought she was blessed. Um, and then suddenly, you know, over a short period of time, the whole relationship disintegrated so much so that he's losing his entire career. She's now been, I wouldn't say permanently branded as a victim, but no one likes to be only known as a victim. You want to be known as more than that. You have more to offer to the world. And you have obviously a certain segment of Octavian's fan base are going to be making it their mission to make her life a living hell. So in the end, it really is disappointing because nobody ends up really winning. And the people who could have stopped it, who could have made sure that this didn't continue were the label, right? They could have stepped in when this was happening at the time and rescued the situation in some regard, but they don't do that. They enable it. And that's why I've said previously when it comes to other of these cases, um, let's say Octavian is a monster. Let's say he is a bad guy and there's no road back for redemption for him. Let's say that is true, which I don't believe. I think there's always a road back to redemption, but let's say that is true. If that is true, but I still believe that um, it, it's not, it doesn't happen. It's not just the fault of that one person, right? There's a group of people who turn a blind eye, who purposely refuse to get involved. And then as soon as it gets too much, they then just start pointing the fingers and say, no, it's just you. You did this by yourself. It's like, yeah, maybe. But you're meant to be my team. You're meant to be people are looking after me. You're meant to be supporting the situation and acting as a big brother, whatever it may be called, the big bro, loads of family, I love you. All these sort of platitudes get thrown around the place. But whenever somebody's in actual trouble and they need actual help, those people go missing. And that is essentially what ends up happening. Because I'm sure if you're Octavian, he's fairly lonely now. I'm pretty sure there's a lot of people like have um, gathered around this girl, Hannah. And I'm sure she's got a great support system in her family and, you 
you know, strangers are probably sending her messages every other day and making sure she's okay and all this sort of stuff. But if you're Octavian, that group of people that you used to hang around, hang around with, the group of people that used to hit you up all the time about a guest list and wanting to meet up in certain places and all the branding deals and people, all these companies, I'm sure those communications have dried up. So he's all on his own. Do you know what I mean? So that's the really distressing part of this whole thing. Um, uh, in a, an industry that basically takes advantage and exploits and then abandons artists when they kind of hit a brick wall and they're going through some tough times is now the same industry that's effectively negatively affected this young lady's life and left her with emotional scars that'll take a very very long time to heal so this is um from shade borough play some clips from the documentary itself and then we can end the show this party some random house party that I ended up i actually lost all my friends she's talking about how she met him and yeah we just started chatting but a lot of fun just our friend groups kind of meshed and then um i think a year after we were kind of just sleeping together, he asked me to be his girlfriend. Mono world. They moved in together and bought a puppy. By summer 2019, Hannah was pregnant. She says Octavian didn't want the baby, so she had an abortion. She says he attacked her the same day. God I just wanted to like be held and feel like I hadn't just done something really, really horrible. And he kind of pushed me onto the floor, like grabbed me by my face and threw me backwards, kicked me, threw me into the balcony door. There was like a chunk out of my hand that ripped and um, my lip was burst and I had just several bruises. Jesus Christ. And I think if anybody, <laughs> and imagine, right, that at the time that she first put these allegations out, some people from her team, his team, were denying it, her calling her a liar, basically insinuating that she was making it all up. He was obviously spinning out of control and saying all types of nonsense, but, you know, put it to one side because he's obviously got his own demons he was suffering from. But there's a lot of people on the team that were making excuses for his sort of behavior. And to suggest that this was only something that came to light when she made the allegations is insane. There's no way that no one else would have known about this. But they purposely decided to turn a blind eye. They didn't step in because he was making on the money at the time. And it was all good times, right? It was all happy, happy as Larry. Everyone was going to the shows, attending these fucking tours, going to the great festivals, going to inter get interviewed by big stations and magazines and shit. And behind the scenes, this girl was going for absolute hell. Crazy. Then she heard from Octavian's lawyers. I got an email from his lawyer with a NDA offering me £20,000 to never speak on anything that's happened in our relationship never tell any publications, never tell any family, never tell any friends, never say anything bad about Octavian or his career or anything at all really. Delete. Oh, and by the way, don't don't be um don't be fooled. That lawyer was hired by the record label. That's the same lawyer that they give you to negotiate your 360 deal who then takes a chunk out of that deal, right? It's the same fugazi um scammy uh routine that they run. So that same lawyer that the record label hired was the same one that was offering her hush money. I would say that's my assumption. I don't know any information. It's all alleged, but that's what I would guess. That's how scummy and disgusting the music industry and just the entertainment industry in general is horrendous. And imagine at the end of this, right? The victim was a young lady. The all photos, all evidence, all videos. It just all felt wrong. I didn't want to sign it. I said I'm not going to sign it. I've seen evidence Octavian's music management were involved. They deny it, and sources suggest they believed his side of the story. Of course Hannah they thinks did. Octavian's career just came first. And I think most people, especially myself being an Octavian fan, you can't deny that you did recognise the difference in him over the years, over the you know the months, then when he kind of started to pop. And it happens so often, right, with people that I've kind of followed over the years. And it's something that's a real recurring thing. The moment they sort of get that initial buzz and pop and kind of go quote unquote pop and get successful and the song kind of goes into radio radio rotation and they get certain looks on certain stations and YouTube channels and shows and brand deals, you can slowly see the kind of musical output start to dwindle somewhat because, you know, naturally those kind of um, um, deals and sponsorships outside of it are taking up more of your time.
but then there are those kind of great artists who are able to kind of rein that back in put those to one side a little bit and then recommit to the music they're usually a bit of a blip right they pop they go big they get the corporate sponsorship the music kind of dips and then they kind of pull it back in again and they come back up again the quality but i did recognize a gradual decline in the quality of octavian's music the more time went on and then of course you know you couldn't take your eye off the fact that he physically looked different he physically looked like he was probably indulging in all the um excesses and distractions that you would get from being a young Young, fairly affluent um newly minted rapper and singer in the uk again you have to imagine this isn't america right if you're a star in here you basically are a star you're basically a big one right because there's not many other people to really listen to so that obviously changes things so um this wasn't a surprise so if we could see as fans right just fans who had no access no information we didn't we weren't around him in the studio and shit we didn't hear him speaking every day we just saw what we just saw whatever content he put out there and we recognized it imagine his label who's who are there with him every single day representative people that work with him closely who are traveling with him day in day out come on they just wanted to keep me quiet and make sure that it doesn't affect money or his tarnish his reputation bloody hell Around the same time, some of the tracks Octavian was making. Then she heard from Octavian's lawyers. Sony's Black Butter Records seemed to describe how he might hurt women. There's a song. This sort of stuff I've got no point. I've got no real time for. I think you should be. I should be allowed to say whatever the hell they want on a track. Freedom of speech should exist in music, and it should always be like that. I think if you want to start placing people's language, then you have to apply that to all forms of or to all genres of that exist. I feel like whenever this conversation does arise, it only seems to ever come into question whenever speaking about quasi quote unquote urban hip hop rap music. It never gets applied to hip. It never gets applied to pop metal even um you know whatever else music that exists out there that people don't apply this stuff to that's where it can sometimes get annoying and it can seem like a little bit of an attack specifically on the black community if you want to apply these draconian somewhat outdated um stipulations of what people can say or not on a the track then it has to be applied to the music industry at large and of course that's going to negatively affect the quality of the music but hey Oh, it is what it is. And in general, too, if you want to catch monsters and you want to catch bad guys and bad actors, you don't need to dissect their lyrics. Their actions are going to speak much louder than their words on the track. And he's basically proved it, right? He's he's probably more of a piece of shit that, that in person than he is on what he's saying on the track. I'm sure her hearing these bars and them, it may be alluding to the situation that they're going through was probably hurtful. But I'm sure what he actually did to her physically and mentally in real life was probably a lot more than hearing fans of people scream this song that may or may not being described about you i would say i'm called my head he would reference these songs in studio as the one about killing hannah and okay that's a, <laughs> I mean, i'll take back what i said there. <laughs> he, calls sick her, man. And he laughs and he gets celebrated for it just like thousands of fans would sing it to him at his shows and they were literally singing about things that were happening to me and ironically that's his best song so it was a very clear statement to say you're not being made aware that this is what your artist has been doing this is the music that he's making about what he's doing I just made your girl she sent the letter months before she went public with the same allegations but black butter didn't drop octavian back then when of course I asked they why, didn't they say they were not provided with evidence at this time and were assured by octavian and his management that the claims weren't true you're gonna stop hitting her right yeah, yeah i'm gonna stop all right cool anyway so what, what are you gonna go studio next is like these labels man <laughs> absolute pieces of shit aren't they for both people right when he's going through all this mess and he needs their help the most they drop him when he's actually abusing her and they can actually bring it back in and save the life of somebody right a, a young lady who's being abused they don't do anything disgusting two weeks later hannah was back with octavian she withdrew her complaint and told them to ignore the letter black butter say it was therefore reasonable to assume that they were dealing with their relationship look what they're hiding themselves. behind today hannah says she feels duped 
And he said, I just want to speak to you once, face to face. I thought maybe I'll get some kind of apology, closure. I went to London and he was showing me all these paintings he'd been doing to deal with his anger management that he's doing. So it was a very clear therapy. He's booking couples therapy for us. He was so gentle, so sincere, so compassionate. I've, I don't know how he could act this good. It was, it felt so real how he which probably explains why I think a lot of people are probably thinking like, why is she? Because it's very rare that you see an ex-partner or somebody even in an abusive relationship that would go the entire way, you know, kind of pursuing charges and putting out all the information, the pictures, the detailed accounts of the issues, the videos, right? Usually they just want to, you know, um, have some sort of break and closure whether it's monetarily or just putting their story out one time and moving on but she seemed to have really gone out of way. and especially if you remember when she dropped the allegation i'm pretty sure she dropped the story on the day that he was meant to announce the album or release the album one or the other right so she's obviously gone out of her way to just destroy his career and a lot of people are thinking like why is this happening why is she so um vengeful and really making her mission to bury the guy and this is why he obviously um was somehow manipulative and was able to kind of convince her that he had changed and he made all the efforts and did all the things that you would imagine um somebody who feels repentful about what they've done and wants to make amends and then i think she felt so betrayed and felt so duped and felt so um embarrassed and made a fool of that she would kind of declare that day if he fucks up again i'm gonna end him and i think that's what basically happened for the most part if you want a reason because it is honestly I, I from stuff i've seen you don't really see especially women in this situation young ladies go this entire way with it it sometimes gets a bit too much they just want to kind of deal with you know kind of deal with it behind closed doors reach a settlement work something but the reason why she's doing this is because he, he himself turned her back on her in a really really dark way and you know this is his bed he has to lay in it now and this is a consequence of his face his career has been ruined his name has been tarnished um you know he was not really that successful for a long period of time so his family hasn't even been able to enjoy the fruits and the riches of his success for that long right he, look how many people have been affected by his kind of reckless behavior not only her but everyone else within his orbit right now his labels getting besmirched managers i saw people attacking his ex-flatmate that he was living with like loads of people have basically become collateral dam collateral damage off the back of his reckless and somewhat um you know batshit crazy behavior really changed and i fell for it in September. Let's continue. People like this in the music industry. I want people to really think about who, whose pockets they're putting money into. Do you think the industry is responsible for what happened? Yes. They're not responsible for what happened, but they're responsible for letting it continue to a margin and a scale. Of course. That's left me pretty traumatized and scarred for the rest of my life had someone ever told him even once what you're doing is wrong we wouldn't be where we are they would rather continue on their way to making him a star and making money from him <sighs> damaging damaging stuff and you know most likely his career is done for now i still think there maybe should be a route for redemption in some way shape or form it should always exist for most people i think there are some crimes that are inexcusable and probably should remove you from ever having a possibility of making a living uh being an entertainer of some sort right they, those crimes do exist i don't have to mention them aloud but you know what i'm talking about but i do think there is an opportunity for redemption but of course this only comes when you're able to acknowledge the wrong that you've done you're able to kind of make amends with the people that you've hurt the most and I think hiding behind album rollouts and your label and painting somebody as a liar just isn't going to help in it. This whole situation, how he dealt with it was really crap. Um, and effectively, he's only gone and really ruined his own career himself. He has no one else to blame, really, in this regard. And um, I guess it's kind of brave of the girl to go out and speak about this in public. It hopefully helps other people in the industry who have maybe suffered from the same thing to come forward. But the real thing that you'd want from to come from this is that this doesn't happen again right that the industry takes knowledge um 
so acknowledges its wrongs and what it kind of enabled and the behavior it lets people get away with so that other young ladies in the industry that come in open-eyed and wanting just to take part and fell in love and all this sort of shit don't get you know steamrolled and basically discarded um in favor of an artist and his career because this could have ended in a really tragic way right it could have ended far worse than how it's ended really he's lost his career she's obviously went for a really bad relationship and in you know if you kind of you know zoom out it's not that bad but it could be much worse it could be much worse um again um check it out i guess it's on bbc it's called music's dirty secrets um documentary i'm sure you'll be able to find it on youtube when somebody uploads it later but yeah that's that <laughs>